checking out and comparing the Husky 701, which is that's the Husqvarna Smart Pillin 701, and the 2020 Moto Guzzi V7 Stone, or excuse me, the 2021 version with the new 850cc platform. This is, gonna be, this is gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be a tough one to compare these two bikes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think both of these bikes are, yeah, I got my uh, other partner with me, my better half, but uh, I feel like these bikes are so, they're so different, yet they're so, both so good. This uh, The new version I think they lowered the price on the Husqvarna to 9500 The Moto Guzzi's priced it at 9000 give or take. Uh, you know, brand new now. So they're, even though they're very different bikes, they actually compete in that price range. I think the Moto Guzzi, even though it's uh, people, it's a 850, oh gosh, how dare you. I think that's a good beginner bike. That bike, the Husqvarna Spark Pillin, even though this bike weighs 100 pounds less than that bike. You, you couldn't tell by looking at them, but uh, this bike is not a good beginner bike, not in my opinion. I think it's just a little too snappy. I'm not saying it can't be done. A beginner could a beginner can start on any bike if they take their time and they're patient and, and they are responsible. You can learn on any bike. That being said, you're better off to start on a smaller bike or a lighter bike or a bike with less not as snappy of a throttle not as much uh, uh, get up and go to intimidate you auto goes he shorter I think it's I think I don't know that I don't care about specs I go by feel so if you want specs you know go read a book um, the only the only number that really matters to me when I'm looking at bikes is that price with this bike you can get 9500 I mean when it came out it was like 12 5 in 2019 the 701 version but uh 2020 they lowered the price to 95 and I got this bike much less than that uh, brand spanking new uh, if I told you how much I got this bike for uh, you'd kill me oh yeah I couldn't pass it up both beautiful amazing looking bikes and once again in very different ways you got the retro kind of retro styling they actually have made it a little more modern with the headlight and uh you know the led tail light and the unfortunately the usa version to go with the incandescent turn signals like as far as styling it uh, what is it neo cafe retro is that what they say what they call it just has a more modern kind of almost a flat tracker look to it a bit kind of yeah it uh it's a really, this is a really cool bike, and the Moto Guzzi is a very cool looking bike as well. Everything I'm saying is subjective. Uh, this is, uh, both of these bikes look so good, I have a hard time choosing. But me, my opinion, I will say even tell you later. What's your opinion? I think the Moto Guzzi. Yeah. Or Guzzi, however you say it. But, see, like you said, that's, that's opinion. Because I think they both look good. Don't get me wrong, or we wouldn't have got them. But. I really like the lines on this bike. I think 480 pounds field, 380 pounds field. You look at them, that's, you'd, you'd be like, no way. But this bike has a more, a metally feel. This bike, they use some plastics and things to, to save on weight. I kind of don't like, like I like cleanliness. <laughs> Dirty. No, not dirty. <laughs> I'm talking about like just all this is like exposed. You see it all, but see some people like that. But this just looks like a cleaner setup yeah. to me. Some people absolutely hate the tank on this. I actually think it's pretty cool, the styling of it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you got to realize these are covers and people are like, oh, you know. But it, it, it's pretty sharp. Uh, it looks good. It, it's aggressive looking. It's got that line. I just, I like, and it, this thing has a very pretty looking back end, I think. See, now this side looks better. I said, I think this side looks better because it covers up some of this with all this part. Oh, yeah, you got that cover on the side. So. 
Yeah, so that makes it a little bit cleaner I mean, looking. I mean, did a really good job mm -hmm. styling this bike. Yeah. And I think I've always thought the V7 was a great looking bike. And some people hate the new headlight. I think it looks pretty cool, especially when I see you riding it, it makes me jealous. It makes me want to be riding it. Uh, I think they did it really good because how they put this 701 in here with the big 7, almost like ghost uh, decal look to it. That 7, but then the 01, man. Almost like that's your number when you're like on a track or something. I think that's really neat. This is one of the better looking stock mufflers on a bike. And I also think this is one of the better sounding stock mufflers on a bike. Just kind of cool looking. Like it even says 701 there and that's the tail light. It says 701 under there. Oh, good, yeah. I mean, just little like Easter eggs. Yeah. I mean, it's like, when you go back and forth, uh, uh, between both bikes, you can see that they've put details into the design of it that a lot of times get passed over by like other makes and manufacturers they just you know put the bike together and get it out there like you can tell a little bit of passion went into the design of, of literally both bikes but man the way they etched this eagle in here i you know i think that t that's some machine work like that's some like a pretty hardcore detail in my opinion the way they etched that in there something else i like is this has dual exhaust and it just looks oh, yeah. so symmetrical you see the side you know transverse engine and when you start this up you can feel it go you know <laughs> like just so symmetrical and i mean like the curves that's what, the, that's what i'm saying i think sorry the moto guzzy is an absolute work of art it the v7 i think is just a beautiful bike for some reason, they offset the like the tack, like your gauge cluster thing, over to the left to put your key thing here. But I actually think that us putting this uh, little uh, windshield fairing like thing with the little gashes in it kind of gives it a little more evenness. Fired up. That's good. I think this motor has a great sound, but it's the exhaust mufflers subdue it a bit. They subdue how good this motor sounds, or muffle it, which I guess is their job. You know? There you go. That's something, you get that really cool shake with that bike, which is pretty neat. Yeah, stock, this one has a little more fire in it, so to speak. It's got some pops in it. It's got some, especially on decel, like if you leave it in gear and then you brake and kind of decel, it'll kind of it'll, it'll kind of sound like a little bit of a, like a mini machine gun. It's not overly obnoxious, but man, it sounds just right. Maybe maybe 30 and a half. I don't know what that is. This one's 33. But this bike is 100 pounds lighter than that bike. If you if you've got to where you're good at leaning on one leg, I mean this bike's this bike's really easy to push around your garage. My inseam is 28 inches, so like this is actually okay. It's still like you know once I put all my weight on it, it kind of. Cause like, I mean, I'm tippy toed, but not a not like not crazy. Yeah. Like. So. Yeah. She she has a 28 inch inseam on a 33 inch bike or a 33 inch seat height bike, I guess. Yeah. The seat. But yeah, kind of hold me still when I'm 
sitting at a stoplight so I don't have to sit there and keep my hand on the mm -hmm. brake, uh, the, uh, the front brake or whatever. Okay, this is my personal opinion. I think the Moto Guzzi is a better looking bike than the Spark Pillin. But do I think it's so much better looking that looks is only a part of the equation when buying a bike. Um, you you should like the styling. If you don't like the styling, don't be looking at it. Because your kickstand's down, just to let you know. Oh yeah, it's a good running. That that these bikes have very both bikes have a very good. They're both both of them have a unique motor. But in different ways. You got the you got the V twin, a little bit of thump, but man, that single has a little bit of thump to it as well. <laughs> oh man, beginner rider, kind of beginner. She's still a beginner. I mean, wow. I guess you didn't give it any throttle, but I'm not saying a beginner can't ride this bike, but what I'm saying is it, I think it's just a tad too much for, for most beginners, or for a lot of beginners. I don't want someone to try to ride a motorcycle. This be their first bike, they get on it, and they get freaked out and intimidated, and then quit. <laughs> Uh, not that good. I know some of them. Oh goodness. I didn't realize this was going to turn like this. Um, yeah, handling. If you're, if, if you're more interested in performance, you are going to like the Husqvarna better than the, the Moto Guzzi. That doesn't mean, the Moto Guzzi is not a snail. Like a lot of people act like they're so slow are they once again i mean even though people are so stupid and you have to beat it through their heads over and over again it is not a sport bike and everybody seems to want to compare every bike to a super sport or something crazy you know yeah this bike is way more agile than the v, the Moto Guzzi and the, the thing is I think the Moto Guzzi is actually agile uh, but I think this bike is just on another level as far as how easy it is to how willing it is to lean over and how easy it is this bike if you're leaning performance you're gonna like the Husky better but the, the Moto Guzzi is not a snail it handles good in its own it handles good for what it is and it it's not it's not slow, like. And then also this uh, Husqvarna comes with a quick shifter, so. And it's got traction control, but uh, sometimes it messes up, sometimes it don't mess, or it acts like it messes up, but it don't, so it does some weird things. This dash sucks. The Moto Guzzi dash is a lot better. However, the Moto Guzzi dash does not have a fuel indicator. That being said, I've not really cared that much on that bike because uh, it, it goes so long before needing to fill up. And when the reserve light comes on to fill up on that bike, it uh, you still got like 60 or 70 miles, maybe even more if you play your you know throttle right. Uh, this bike, it has a fuel gauge, but it sucks. It's garbage. Uh, this thing has a smaller fuel tank, only 3.1 gallons. I think I, range-wise, I can probably get, I might be able to get 140, 150, I mean, this is if I'm not ripping it a little bit, but I can get 140, 150 miles out of this bike. That quick shifter is pretty cool on this bike. Hey, Cardinal. Thinks the Lord's watching over us. Send an angel to watch over us. Yeah, that I like the display on that bike a lot better. A lot more clear, a lot easier to read. 
this bike i think revs to 9500 maybe 10,000 rpm is like where the max rpm is but the counter goes all the way up to 13 so i don't know what the point of that is yeah i like the gauge cluster on this because they incorporated that eagle look you know and like and i like where the signals are like right signal and left signal you know that eagle on there i think moto guzzi should have made that the fuel gauge that being said i don't care because that you have so much range on that bike you can do 200 i mean you can do 250 miles on that bike consistently and not really have to worry about uh falling flat falling you know getting stranded this bike i'm i'm in that 100 to 120 mile i start worrying a little bit because it it shows this bike will probably about 80 miles of range and this bike will already be showing that it is empty <laughs> and that's something too about that seat i've i never feel like i'm slipping or uh being pulled back on that seat in this car here but uh on the on the moto guzzi that is but on this bike on the husvarna i feel like if i get on it i start sliding off the back <laughs> i have to hang on with my hands which i don't like doing <laughs> yeah oh this bike is definitely quicker um do i think the moto guzzi is a boring bike no i don't uh but this is this is so subjective and people are going to have such different opinions it's just it's going to depend on a person's personality and who they are their character uh if you are an adrenaline junkie i mean you're in that i mean that's what you have to have you definitely are going to be a, you're going to want this house barn of 701 there's no doubt even though i don't think it's like super easy it's okay this bike's mediocre getting into neutral this husbarna that moto guzzi is going to rank down there as one of the worst bikes at trying to get into neutral they both got abs they both got electronics uh i feel like they work or they don't seem to mess up on the moto guzzi they work more fluidly on the moto guzzi um, I think the, I'm not that being said the ABS on this Husqvarna is works really good as far as like traction control stability rider mode type stuff there is no rider modes on this bike but it does have a traction control thing and it's really weird and awkward to try to deactivate it this dash sucks on this bike that is man if they they don't even have to do like a great dash just do something better than that this dash looks like a kid's toy it does like it looks like something you would get get in a McDonald's kids meal or something the guzzy doesn't isn't like that it looks like it was produced with some intelligent design behind it besides the fuel gauge part of it um the only thing i don't like about the dash on the moto guzzy other than the fuel gauge would be this is me nitpicking every little thing is going to be the gear indicator is sometimes delayed it's not delayed on this bike but this bike has a quick shifter the moto guzzy doesn't the shifting on this bike is a lot shorter throw a little bit smoother than the moto guzzy I think the Moto Guzzi is smooth, but it's got just it's got just enough clunk to kind of give you that retro vibe. I mean, it's intentionally designed that way to give you kind of that more, uh, yeah, that more just kind of mechanical, machiney feel that you don't get out of a lot of modern bikes. A lot of modern bikes kind of just and this Husqvarna kind of it feels like a good bike. Uh, it's a little more toyish feeling, which is not a bad thing. It's just, you know what I'm saying? That, to me, that bike, I think it feels more significant than this bike. Uh, maybe, and that, that could also be just like a collector viewpoint. <laughs> I, I think the V7 is a really nice bike. Uh, but that, that being said, I, I, I love this bike, this Spark Pillin. It's, I have not, there's not really been any, anything about this bike like I said, I'm going to dislike something about every bike. I, the, the Moto Guzzi and this Vart Pillin are my favorite bikes. I, I, that's why I have them. That's why I own them. Like I said, it's just preference. It's Everything is so subjective and it's all preference. Ooh, yeah. 
quite a bit of gravel. Well, this bike punches above, well, it's really lightweight. So it does punch above its weight, that's for sure. Uh, as far as the power that it has, the power that it has and the lightweight make this bike pretty, well, it's a pretty quick bike, you know. Huh? No. Are you wanting to ride this bike? Okay. You're fine. You get the kickstand up? Okay. Man, this, I like this Moto Guzzi though. When I get on it, just that machiney feel that it has. Okay. This, this seat is definitely not very comfortable. It is hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this seat on the Moto Guzzi is definitely more pillowy, in a, but in a good way. Uh, this, yeah, this, the first thing I notice, when I get on the Moto Guzzi after getting on that bike, this feels like a solid kind of, like I said, I know I say it over and over, but man, it feels like they carved this bike out of a block of iron or something. I don't feel like there's any rattling parts or anything, really. That bike is a good bike, but it, you know, like I said, they, they did things to intentionally cut the weight, you know, for that performance aspect of it. Yeah. Actually, I like these little mirrors. They are like per They're like we're perfect spot too, which is weird because you're taller than me. Yeah. This bike is smooth too. I like this bike. The Moto Guzzi's not slow. It's got I mean it's not blisteringly fast, but I think this bike has just the right amount of power for like a, I think about 80% of people that are maybe 70 to 80% of people that are riding. Yeah. Hmm. So what do you think of them? Well, see, I feel like I can feel the weight on the Moto Guzzi. It does weigh more, but this bike is not, like, it doesn't take nothing to make it, like, I'm not even barely pressing the bars. I'm just, I feel like I'm just moving my body, and it may, this bike will change directions. I feel like this bike, when I'm on this bike, and even that bike, I just look where I want to go, and that's where I'm going to go. Guzzi is, like, kind of under you. I feel like my feet are behind me on this. This bike is true mid pegs. I feel like this Moto Guzzi. Oh yeah, the, this I feel like this bike and that bike are way different feeling. Uh, but I feel like both of them are really good. It's so hard to say which one I would, I can't, it's hard for me to tell a person which bike they should get. Honestly, the best way to decide is literally to test ride both of them. And if you can, do a kind of a prolonged test ride. Like don't do a little five minute thing because there's always going to be nuances with bikes that you got to get used to with every single bike. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it just is a little bit hard. Okay. Alright. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. This is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like that actually. It's nice if I was just taller. I prefer the Moto Guzzi, but I think it's it's just a uh, it's just more comfortable for my. Uh, well, yeah, this seat is so much more comfortable. <laughs>